Hey friends, this is Ram and you're watching Fitness Geek. Uh, in today's video, we are talking about the Power BI Data Gateways, uh, what it is and when do you need to use it, uh, the new uh, you know features that's available in the premium workspaces uh, in cases you don't want to install you know a data gateway in a VM and don't want the overhead of managing it. So all these things will be talked in this video. So stay tuned. Let's head to our system and see the architecture diagram for this scenario. Now, if you see my screen, this is our Power BI service. This is a cloud database which is uh, exposed via a public endpoint. It can be an Azure SQL or your Cosmos DB or your Azure managed instance. So it can be anything uh, that is hosted in cloud and can be accessed via a public endpoint. In scenarios where you're actually accessing a cloud database, uh, there is no problem. Power BI service, which is a cloud hosting itself, can access those databases, data sources without any problems. The problem actually arises when you have to access something that is sitting inside a virtual network or in the on-premises. So what happens in that case is that your databases are not exposed and Power BI service cannot access them. When you are creating those reports in your uh, office, uh, your system is joined uh, in the domain and you're able to access the databases in your on-premises or your virtual network, uh, you have no issues, you created the report, you published it. The moment it is now uh, available in Power BI service, it is not able to communicate with those databases or the data sources. That happens because those uh, databases that you were actually using are not available over the internet. So for Power BI service to actually access it, we will need something called data gateway. So this is basically an agent installed within a VM or uh, a physical server in the on-premises that can access your data sources on behalf of Power BI service. So this is the situation or the scenario where you need data gateway. Now let's see what a data gateway is and what are the types of data gateways available. So essentially Power BI gateway or the data on-premise data gateway as it's known uh, you know, uh, as, is used as a bridge between the Power BI service and your on-premise network. It can be a virtual network within Azure as well. So it is basically treated as an on-premise. So this is base, uh, used to communicate with your you know, protected databases, but it does it in a very secured manner. What are the types of data gateways available? We have the on-premise on-premises data gateway, this is the standard data gateway, the standard mode. So when you install it, you install it in a VM. Uh, and once you have installed, you can uh, actually use user, user passwords uh, based authentication or AAD based authentication to access uh, any of the resources uh, securely. Uh, it, you can even you know access Azure SQL or uh, any of the publicly available databases in Azure uh, to communicate securely via private endpoints. So that's another thing that you can do with it. But uh, this is the standard one and it supports uh, other uh, you know uh, applications as well. So it, you can also use uh, this on-premise data gateway, the standard mode uh, for power, power apps, power, power atom, uh, automate and uh, you know the, all the power uh, solutions that uh, Microsoft has. The other one is the on-premise data gateway personal mode. So this one is uh, basically for an individual. So if I am using a Power BI you know, uh, service for myself, like uh, I've got a few reports that I have uh, created and my database sits uh, in you know, close proximity for me and I want to publish those reports and make it available for other users. So what I can do a quick you know, solution would be just uh, download these gateways uh, this gateway, uh, install it on my local system, be it my laptop, uh, configure it using my Azure uh, AD account, and make sure that I have access to those uh, databases. Uh, then I can use uh, SQL-based, you know, uh, or authentication, uh, or 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 it can be just, uh, you know, the Windows accounts. Uh, that's also possible. So you use that and you create, uh, you know, share it. Uh, and then you can share those reports that you have created with your users 
But the only uh, thing is that in this case, uh, you are the one authenticating to the databases. And this is not a, a good, I mean, this is not something that you should do uh, for uh, large you know, enterprise solutions, but it, it works for uh, some cases. We will see the differences. And the last one, the virtual network data gateway. This is a new solution that's coming from Microsoft. Uh, it is only available in the premium, you know, uh, premium per user or the premium capacity uh, licenses. It's not available for the pro. Uh, the thing with this is uh, it will be, uh, it will install this thing uh, inside your virtual network and uh, you will need to create certain uh, subnets for that. And when you, uh, so it will need a delicate, you know, dedicated subnet and you install it there. And then it can access a uh, you know, few uh, data sources uh, see uh, securely via private endpoints and that's currently uh, not available you know generally available so this is a public currently in public preview and uh, it can access a few resources uh, so that's also one of the limitations but in future this will be a very good solution where you don't have to install uh, data gateways and then uh, inside your VMs and have the overhead of managing it and you know patching it all those kind of uh, overhead uh, will not be required in this scenario but the first solution where we have the on-premise data uh, gateway installed as a standard mode in standard mode uh, in that case you will need to uh, definitely manage the entire VM you will be patching it you'll make it secure you know, to make sure that it is available all the time so your data gateways are you know uh, available and your power by power bi reports are working so that's that's the types of data gateways and if you look at the comparison like if you see the standard versus the personal mode what uh, what's the difference uh, as as i said before if you have the standard mode you can use that gateway for your power uh, Power apps you can use for Azure Logic apps you can use for Power Automate. So it will be available in all those uh, power solutions as a gateway. But the Power BI, uh, but the Power BI data gateway in personal mode is only available for Power BI. It works in certain scenarios like when we, uh, when one of our data scientists wanted to uh, create some quick reports, we just went for this personal mode uh, quick solution. Within a day, we were able to just you know spin it up and the reports were available. And once we had our uh, on-premise standard mode uh, data gateway available, we just you know switched the connection and uh, he was able to uh, still work with the reports. So yeah, recommendation for a proper solution is the standard mode. If you see the differences, the direct query support is not available in the personal mode. So you will always be doing the import. So you'll be importing and you know setting up the scheduled uh, refresh that's that's the you know, big difference other than that uh, if you see it runs as a single user with your credentials so, so someone uh, like if i have installed it and i have configured the you know my data sources in power bi service to use my on-premise uh, gateway in the personal mode then i will be the one who will be authenticating to those data sources so that's what it means which runs as a single user with credentials so yeah, this is the difference between your uh, on-premise data gateway or standard mode and your personal mode. Uh, installation, you can quickly you know download the personal mode or the standard mode and install it. We will be doing that in our future videos. Uh, but today we were just you know uh, trying to look into the gateways and how it looks and what problem it solves. Uh, the best part is that it is all secured. So this the data that travels via these uh, it is ba basically very much similar to the um, uh, self-hosted integration runtimes that you had uh, for data factory or synapse so it works it works in a very similar way so yeah th there's a secure access between your data sources and the power bi service the setup is easy and yeah we'll see all those set up in our future videos the new thing that uh, microsoft is uh, you know, coming up with is this thing called the virtual network data gateways currently available only in your uh, for the premium per user premium uh, workspaces so that's that's one of the limitations or you can say feature you know premium feature from microsoft 
and also currently it is in public preview not available not generally available so we'll have to wait what changes when it is generally available uh, some limitations these are the only supported data sources so it's basically azure sql azure synapse analytics uh, this is the sql pool uh, dedicated sql pool or the serverless uh, the azure data bricks the azure data explorer uh, cosmos so yeah these are the ones that you can actually access using the you know uh, virtual network data gateway in power bi premium workspaces so yeah this was uh, the quick quick video on uh, introduction on the data gateways and when do you actually need it and do we really need it the answer is yes there are scenarios when you will need it when you want to securely access uh, even your uh, publicly available uh, databases or you it's kind of a secure feature for you so definitely something you need to have and if you're accessing something in on-premises or which is protected by vnets then definitely you need the data gateways all right so that's all for today uh, we will see you in the next video so thanks for all your support and yep have a nice day bye bye